We're going to do Kube in, I think the title said 15 minutes. Um, so it's actually 26 from when you start it. So we're, at, we're, we're not going to go start to finish today. I'm going to kind of launch it and show it to you guys. But um, anyway, um, welcome to this session. My name is Chris Culligan. I'm a field engineer for Cisco. I'm here on behalf of a gentleman named um, uh, Valard Benicosa, who gave a presentation on this at Cisco Live Barcelona. I highly recommend that you go and download and watch that presentation. But basically, the topic today is how to go and get Kubernetes um, in a consumable format in as short as and efficiently as possible, uh, leveraging UCS uh, if you guys have it. So here we go, 15 minutes. So first of all, here's the website I put up on the board as well, um, where you can go and download and look at all of the code behind it. Um, but basically, the design behind this was simplicity, right? It's like, how do we take a bare metal blade and get Kubernetes like done, ready to go, and gun and run commands and apps uh, as quickly as possible? And let's not use things like Pixie because then we don't want to scrape MAC addresses and set up Pixie servers and sort of you know deal with all of that. Um, and then how do we make it consumable with other automation tools once we get everything up, right? So um, it's a very very simple uh, design. It's basically a couple of containers that we use. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to note too is that you know if for you those of you, uh, yes sir. Sorry. Um, when I do that, it kind of messes up, and I'm going to be going in and out of this, uh, this anyway. So I'm just kind of giving you the high-level overview, and then we're going to, it's actually a live demo, which is probably not going to work, but we're going to try. Um, <laughs> so, because it's after lunch and it's a live demo. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, you know, if for those of you familiar with the UCS model, it's basically sheet metal wrapped around a data model, right? Not the other way around. So it, this truly gives us the idea of consuming UCS uh, as a service, right? Um, so again, those of you familiar with the data model, all of this stuff can be expressed through code and consumed by the XML API or the, uh, the Python SDK that we have uh, for UCS. But the thing that is missing is this whole first step of just getting an OS on the box, right? UCS doesn't solve that um, for, you know, as, as far as this initial implementation, right? You look on it and it's like, well, how do I configure the blade and the server? But then you have other solutions to actually set up and put an OS like CentOS or VMware or whatever on the box, right? Um, so I want to show you, and yeah, this is not showing up, but basically all of these solutions on the left-hand side here are actually uh, solutions that we all know and love for, we developed for actually putting an operating system on a blade. And then if we're doing Kubernetes, all of the stuff on the right here is all uh, solutions that we've used uh, to get Kubernetes onto the operating system once it's actually loaded. Um, and again, a lot of those are actually based on, all of these guys are based on Pixie, um, and then, you know, and, and, and it becomes a little bit of, uh, complicated, right? Um, so there's this thing that got introduced in UCS 2.2 uh, code a while back. Um, basically, it allows us to mount remote media, right? That's not a huge deal. There's other uh, companies that do that as well. But with us, it's actually nice because you can consume this function with an API. So what you can actually do is you can actually code the ability to mount a remote ISO to a blade um, in an automated fashion um, with whatever your, your tool sets are. So that actually gets us to a point where we can actually bootstrap uh, via our, 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 our tooling, right? Um, but even when we do that, there's all of this stuff that we have to do to actually get the, the, the image uh, properly set up so we can actually set up on the blade, right? But again, we can automate that. And that's kind of what today's session is about. So these guys sat down and they said, how do we make this really, really, really simple? And so the solution itself, and again, go to that website um, and, and take a look at how it's set up. But at its very core, it's basically an API server that they put a GUI on top of, right? And so the API server itself actually uses uh, the Python SDK. The reason why we did that was because that's what UC, excuse me, UCS uses. Um, and so that's what we use to communicate uh, to the UCS uh, manager and actually get all of the images mounted and, 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 um, and set up, and the service profiles and all of that. Um, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to actually show you uh, a live demo of this stuff in action. Just wanted to sort of give you the why. And again, two components to Kabam, right? So there's the actual sort of API server, and then there's the front-end web interface. The front-end web interface is just so you can put all of your data in there and say how you want to set up uh, at its most, uh, at its most uh, basic level. And then again, this is really what we're going for, right? We're going for something that you can either use a GUI to actually implement on your own, or you can actually uh, use um, your own tooling to be able to automate this, right? So again, simplicity, right? Trying to make things very simple, very easy to turn up uh, Kubernetes on bare metal. 
All right, so here we go. How much time do I got here? All right. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you really quick is that I don't have a web server running, so this is a live demo. I want to make sure we prove that. And then, yes? Uh, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing running there right now, so I just want to make sure that, that, that we were there. Um, and so basically, when you go to the uh, Kubam website, it gives you um, a command that you run uh, right here, curl, and that actually goes out to the GitHub repository and gets all this stuff, downloads it, uh, and sets everything up for you, and then it's just a Docker Compose command to do it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and now, again, I've already pulled all this stuff down for the sake of time, so we're just actually going to go Docker Compose up in that directory. Um, and then, again, you can knock it down um, very easily. The service goes away, and then, um, and you're all good. So hold on. I'm just going to wait for it to stop. In the meanwhile, I'm also going to show you, so inside of UCSM, this is a live UCSM cluster. No service profiles uh, under, the root, uh, under the root organization, right? So, and again, this is, this is live. All right, so we're going to go back here. And then the only reason I'm removing um, this uh, file here is because I don't want it to pre-populate the values. I want to put them in, and I want you to see it as I do it, okay? All right, so Docker Compose up in the Kubam directory. So it's going to launch the API server, and it's going to launch the GUI. And then we're going to go over to here. And then now that we see our container is up, okay? So this is, this is the Kubam GUI from start to finish, okay? Here's what we're doing. We're going to log in to the UCS manager, right? OK. So this gives it the credentials. And as we're doing this, it's taking these values, and it's actually populating that YAML file that, that I just showed you that I deleted, right? Number two, we're going to set up. Now, this is, again, live. So if I go here, these VLANs are actually being pulled from the UCSM server or from the UCSM um, device. And then we're going to put in our values for networking. Now, again, we want Kubam to be on the, same, uh, on the same network as the servers that we're trying to bring up so that it can actually go out and it can install and put in all of the, all of the resources that are necessary. OK, so we're going to put this in, name server, and then NTP server. I'm going to update. OK, so again, this is updating an YAML file. And I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to show you the back end in a minute. OK, and so we're going to pick some servers. Again, this is live, right? So it populated, we're going to say one, five, seven, right? So we're going to pick three blades to go ahead and put this on. Now, those blades are unassociated. They do not have an OS on them. There's no service profiles. There's nothing, right? OK, so down here, we're going to populate this. Now, as we put these commands in, this is with three servers, but we can do more if we want. So as we put this command, in, it's going to auto-populate the rest of the cluster for us, OK? So no super crazy magic there. Whoops. OK, so it auto-populated those IP addresses. In this case, our base OS is going to be CentOS 7.4. So all we're going to do is, I'm going to show you in a minute, we're going to supply the uh, minimal CentOS ISO in that Kubam directory. And that's what it's going to use to build the uh, Kickstart images for each of the blades that we're going to turn up. So we're going to label this as Kubernetes Master. And these guys as the worker bees. And then we're going to update. OK. And again, this is updating the YAML file, OK? Operating system. We're going to map an ISO, right? That C7 at the bottom, that's just a, uh, it's just a sim link to, to this one right here. So you can actually just go out, download this ISO. Um, and again, it'll work with, with, other, um, with other, other OSs as well, OK? So we're just going to update. We're going to use this minimal ISO. That's what it's going to build off of. And we're going to come over here, and we're going to say, hey, what's the Kubam uh, IP address? And so, and Kubam is the, that's the build server, right? And that, in this case, is us. That's literally the server that we're working, working off of. So, bam, bam. Um, you could use Kubam. In this case, we're using root. OK? The reason why we put an SSH key in here is because we cannot log in. Um, we cannot log in via username and password when the cluster comes up. We can only log in with host key. So nice and secure. And then we're going to go down here, um, and we're going to set up a proxy. OK? And the reason why a proxy is needed is because if you are behind a proxy, you got to go out and go to go get all of the packages to load Kubernetes. This server has to, uh, or I'm sorry, each one of the, the nodes that you're installing on has to go out and get those packages, right? So if you're behind a proxy, you're going to have to put that in as well. 
Right. And deploy. So first, we make boot images. So again, it's going to go to that ISO, and it's going to make one megabit, uh, one one megabyte uh, kickstart uh, images. It's got the storage drivers, all of that, just to get the OS on the box, right? And then we're going to hit deploy, and cross our fingers and hope everything works. Okay, and. It's going to start going out. It's going to start creating those service profiles for us. It's going to start and take the kickstart files that it made, and it's going to map those via the API. Uh, it's going to map those um, as a boot device, right? It's going to map those ISIS as a boot device. And here we go. One, two, three. So our nodes are coming up. Again, it does this in about 26 minutes. We don't have that time today, so I just sort of wanted to kick it off and actually show you. There is a video on YouTube. Uh, where you can actually watch sort of the whole process take place. And then basically you go get a cup of coffee or maybe a couple of cups of coffee, uh, and then you come back and you're actually at, at a prompt. So, uh, so there we go. Um, and again, it's at kubam.io. That's where you actually download. Um, and, and, and so the cool thing about this is that we tried to make this, or these guys tried to make it very, very simple. You could go in and do all of this manually. You could run it as a VM. You can go in and sort of modify all of the, uh, all of the script stuff that runs behind it. So it's based on Ansible, uh, Python, Flask. Yeah? It's Ansible-based? So, yeah, some of it's Ansible, definitely. Um, and actually, remember when I talked about the, so the, the Pixie stuff on this side and the, the Kube stuff on this side? So it uses Kube ADM in the back end. You don't have to use that, right? It's just this, it's a cool way to demonstrate how we're actually automating from the bootstrap all the way through Kubernetes, right? Um, and in, like I said, in our case, we use Kube ADM. You could probably do something um, different. And actually, what's really interesting is that we actually have a, a customer that used this um, packaging. They didn't use it to install Kubernetes. They just used it to put CentOS on, right, to hundreds, of, not thousands of servers. Um, so it was a really nice way to sort of show them sort of automating from, from, from a bootstrap on, right? Now, take a look in the directory. So this is Kubam. So there's our ISO that we downloaded, right? We just put in there that we can link to. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the, um, oh, and there's the images that we have downloaded, right? So one, two, three. Um, and then this is what's mapped to each of the service profiles, right? Um, and then by the way, this whole thing, you can be like, hey, you know, go away. I don't want it to be in there anymore. And then all that stuff goes away, right? So it's really lightweight. It's super easy to deploy. Literally, you could do it this afternoon as soon as you're done. How many minutes? I got three minutes. All right, cool. Yeah, totally. Um, so, and then you can see here, here's, the, here's the, the, uh, the Docker containers that are running, which is really cool because it's all about these days we're using containers to install containers to monitor containers. So <laughs> it's super fun. Um, and it, like I said, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, and then you can, you can blow that all away. So again, this is a build box, right? So this doesn't have to be, it's, it's not part of this system. It's just sort of off to the side. You could run it from your laptop, right? It doesn't take a lot of resources. Yes, sir? I'm just curious about that. Yeah. yeah. But what is it based on? Um, it's Python, Flask, Ansible. Um, and the only, by the way, the only reason we used Python to do all of, um, to, to do most of it, I think, was because the US, UCSM SDK is based on Python. That's it. I mean, you know. Well, you install Docker. Yeah, you install Docker, and then you install Docker Compose. And then once Docker Compose is ready, then that's when you run this command. Um, you could use Docker, too, but uh, Docker Compose had some extra sort of coolness that allowed us to go in to you know, give us the right permissions to. I, I'm not entirely sure why I did ask the developer, and it had something to do with like building um, root permissions into the container images, I believe. But you could do it based on Docker if you wanted to. Um, th there's a lot of sort of um, underworkings that you can go into. I actually blew this whole thing up and went through each of those steps myself just to see how it worked. And that's what the store first presents, right? When you collect that initial data? So when you're collecting that data through this really simple, um, through this sim really, really simple web interface, you're actually just making a YAML file, right? So if we cat, kubam, YAML, all of those things we were doing was just putting it in here. And then when we hit deploy, it just takes that YAML file and it. You can edit the YAML file oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Matter of fact, I blew that away and then killed the containers. And when I started the containers back up, they didn't have a YAML file. But if I left this file there and I blew the containers away, like I could just say Docker stop. How's my time? One minute. All right, here we go. So I can just say Docker stop. The whole thing goes away. 
but that YAML file is still there. If I start the containers up again, all that information is going to be pre-populated. So it's constantly looking at that file, right? So yeah, you could go in and manually edit it. Edit it. Um, we just made it really nice because you could do it through a GUI. But again, this whole thing can be consumed by an API. I could show you the, the, the way to actually do it on the command line, too. Uh, I don't have time. <laughs> but I can show you afterwards, offline. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then we just restart it. Docker Compose up. And then if we go back to the website, all that's, see, I'm already logged in. Website's already there. This stuff gets populated. So it's just looking at that YAML file. It's actually just a group of people at Cisco that wanted to make it really easy to get Kubernetes up and running on Blades super fast. It's on, you could, yeah, I mean, you could, like I said, you could adapt it to kind of whatever you want, right? Um, and it's, like I said, it's on GitHub, um, and it's on, and, and the, here's the sort of primary website, but most of the code is on GitHub. That's where that'll take you. So, um, again, Chris Culligan from Cisco. I put my email up there if you have questions. Um, go to that website. Thank you guys very much.